Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am PD Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in this video tutorial series, I want to introduce you to Android app development. Um, so this will be my first uh, trip outside of PHP and Drupal in terms of video tutorial series. But um, I thought it was a, a good time to do this because Android and mobile is increasingly growing uh, in popularity. And so as a result, um, just before we get started, you'll see I'm over at torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I complete them. Uh, this one included, once I have it done, I'll have it up and for sale. Each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these, keep them free, keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20, but you do want to help out, please just leave a comment or a thumbs up on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated. Now, with all that out of the way, why don't we take a look at what we're gonna actually be building. You'll see I've got my emulator here and I clicked on an app called Mathlete. And what this does is it gives us an equation and then we're gonna solve it. And when we do that, we're gonna get a nice toast message and we're gonna see an, uh, a new image show up that tells us whether or not we got the answer right or wrong. And so as I work through a couple here, you'll see that my current score is growing. And then if I actually answer this correct, my current score is now my high score. And if I answer this one wrong, you'll see I get a new X, I get oops, and then my current score drops down to zero. So that's the app that we're gonna create. Um, a couple different concepts here. Obviously we have a nice input. We have some images that we're gonna be rendering dynamically. Uh, we're gonna be keeping track permanently of our high score. Um, and we have our toast messages showing up. So with that said, why don't we go ahead and create a new project? I'm just doing this off screen because I am using Android Studio. So what you're gonna need uh, as prerequisites to this video tutorial series is you're gonna need Android Studio installed. Uh, just do a quick Google search. You can find plenty of walkthroughs to do that. And you're gonna need a little, little bit of background um, knowledge of Java. So if you don't have that, you might just watch a couple tutorials on Java. Um, if there's interest, let me know. I can create a couple. Um, but until then, we're just gonna go ahead and set up our actual application. So you'll see here, I'm just entering an application name, Mathlete Tutorial. I've got my company domain. Um, this is important because my package, the package name of my app is actually going to reference this. Um, and it's typical that you have your, your company name and then it's usually a website and it's usually you get it backwards. So it'll be com dot uh, your domain dot www and you can take it to www uh, and then your app name. And the reason why that's done is so that um, you can well, as close as you can, guarantee some uniqueness to your app name so you don't have collisions when you're in the app store. Uh, so that's what I've done here. My project location, uh, I'm just going to leave it as Mathlete Tutorial. Go ahead and click Next. Here we're going to have the ability to choose which APK we're going to target for Android. And this is really just the version of Android that we're going to be uh, targeting. So I'm going to leave it at default 18 here, Jelly Bean. But you'll see if you go lower, you know, Ice Cream Sandwich, you're going to hit 90% of the devices as opposed to 40% uh, when you're using 18. Um, again, we're not going to be doing a whole lot with our app, so we probably could go lower. Um, but just for the sake of it, we're going to go ahead and use the default 18. And so now I'm just going to choose a blank activity. What this means, uh, we'll get to it in a minute. But essentially an activity is like a user interface that you're going to have, uh, for lack of a better term. Uh, and we'll clarify what I mean by that in a moment. Here it's going to ask me what my activity name uh, I want it to be. So I'm just going to call it main activity because that's essentially what it is for this app. This is pretty simple. So we'll leave it at main activity. The layout, um, you can see here this look and feel. This is actually a layout that's uh, that's defined uh, in XML. And so I'm just going to leave that as activity main because it'll, it'll line up with my main activity. And then the title, don't worry about that right now. And same as the menu resource. I'll go ahead and hit finish. And what ends up happening is you can't see it, but very quickly, Gradle gives me a build. Uh, and in a later video tutorial series, we'll actually go over what Gradle is and why it's important and or cool that Android Studio is using it for us. So with that said, uh, right now we've got our activity main opened up, uh, the actual XML. And uh, unfortunately, we, we always get this error right away just because we don't have some, some things loaded that we should. So I'm just going to close that off. Um, now in activity main, it's, it's extending this action bar activity. Uh, so I don't want that to be the case. I just want this to be uh, activity, right? And then what ends up happening when you select that, you can see it automatically imports uh, Android app activity. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and keep that. Um, now, uh, a couple of things to note, we're not gonna dive too far into this, but you'll see just right off the bat, uh, here's our package name that's defining what our package is for our actual app. And so this will this will tell uh, Java really that all of the classes that we create will be in the same package so we don't know where to find them. 
these import statements, uh, these are kind of default with what we've set up. Uh, we're getting these menu items uh, because we'll have a, a top menu, um, maybe in video tutorial series two. Um, and then we're, we're importing the bundle uh, and that's because we, um, that's how you save the instance. You save some variables to and from when you're loading these activities. Now on that note, in terms of what an activity is, like I mentioned, it's kind of your user interface. Um, and so you'll, you'll see reference here when you're looking at developer.android.com. I highly recommend you check out reference Android app activity. Uh, this talks about what the activity life cycle is. Uh, and by that, what I mean is you can create an activity. Um, it'll show up uh, on the screen and then it can be sent to the background or it can be killed. And so all of that is handled through a number of methods uh, in Java. And so you'll see here the activity actually being launched is denoted by this blue box. It will then run through a series of functions. And so your first one is on create and you'll look at on start, on resume, and then you'll have your activity actually running in the foreground. And so that's why in our code you see here that I've got this on create call right away. Um, this is by default. Android Studio sets this up when we actually create our, our main class that we extend an activity with because you have to have an on create. And then once your activity is done running, uh, it'll go into on pause. And so this method will be called. And so here, there's a few different uh, paths that you can take, right? The user can return to the activity and continue using it. And so this would just kind of be a loop. Um, but I'll, additionally, once you go into on pause, Android could actually uh, kill your app. Uh, if it needs the memory. And so that's where you see here the process gets killed. And so really anything below on pause is unreliable. You might not get on stop, you might not get on destroy. Um, so if you need to save anything, you typically do it in on pause. And don't worry, we'll be coming back to all of this as we develop our, our code. Um, but this is just a quick overview of activities. Let's actually jump into some coding some stuff here. So You'll notice here that we've got the annotation that we're overriding a class uh, method. And so we are overriding the on create, um, and that takes a bundle of the saved instance. Um, and that saved instance makes this conducive, right? So that we can go ahead and actually take uh, data that we already have and continue to use it. Um, and so uh, typically you'll see the super method call. So you'll have super on create, that's just calling to the parent class. Uh, run whatever on create happens up there, and then we're going to do our own uh, information or our own coding down below that. So that's the on create. We're going to add some some stuff to that. But before we do that, you'll notice that I've got a couple other methods here. I've got this on create options menu, and what this is is a menu toolbar up at the top. You'll see I don't actually have it, but you would have a menu up here uh, and then a selection. And so uh, this automatically gets created. We don't really need it because we're not going to be using it in our app. So we can take that out. Um, uh, and we, we don't need that code. So now we've got this nice clean uh, main activity Java file. We've got the on create. Uh, we've set our content view. This is something we'll take a look at in video tutorial two. But just for right now, what I want to do is we'll take a look at this. Uh, where are we? Activity main and rendering problems. Yes, we don't care about that right now. You can see that we're, we're printing out hello world up here. And if we take a look at the, uh, the XML, we can make this a little bit nicer. What we've got is uh, an XML um, tag here. We've got this text view and we're saying the Android text is hello world. And then we've got this uh, set for layout width and layout height. And so what we actually want to do is we just want to grab this text view, grab a reference to it, and we'll change the Android text. And so to do that, what we're going to do is just go Android, um, and we'll call this, what is it, at ID, or ID. Okay, so what this actually does is we set an ID that we can then reference. Uh, don't worry too much about this XML. We're going to come back to this in video tutorial too. But just for right now, I want to be able to grab reference to that. And so in order to do that, what we are going to do is use a little bit of code here. And first and foremost, for our class, we're going to tell uh, the class that it's going to have reference to a private. And this is called a text view. And you can see we get a nice autocomplete there. And we're going to call this, um, what do we call it? We called it hello world, at least for now. And so now we have reference to that. And so once we actually set the content view, we're going to say that hello world is going to be equal to, and what we're going to do is actually cast this to a text view because we're going to find the view by ID. This is a method that comes out of 
the actual activity class. And so we find the view by ID um, and we're going to tell it r.id.hello. Hello world. That should auto complete for us, but it's not just picking up R. So if we go ahead and just make sure we can rebuild our project. And we'll see down here that Gradle is actually doing a little bit of work. You can see that R actually cleans up here. So if I take this out and I just go R.ID. Hello world, you'll see it actually gets referenced there. Now I have reference to the text view. I actually have this XML uh, information here, this, this piece that's saying hello world. And if we actually go into the Java file, what we can do now is rather than say hello world, dynamically we can set this to be hello world dot, you can go to set text. And we're just gonna say uh, hello tutorial viewers. Right. Now, I know this seems really simplistic, but this is going to be the basis for all the different uh, setup that we have within our app, because really, this is a view, this is a view, these two are views, as well as this is a view. And so really dynamically, we're going to be manipulating all of this throughout our program. And so it's all going to be very similar to this, where we're going to find a view, we're going to update it, uh, and then it will get rendered. So this will be the end of the video tutorial, uh, tutorial one where now if I actually play this, we'll see that this is going to come up momentarily. It's just got to build this and then actually render it. You'll see that Gradle is, is building it down here. I'm going to tell it to run on my actual emulator, just to use that one for future launches. And once we have that, you'll see we've now dynamically set hello tutorial viewers, whereas in the XML, it was originally hello world. And we can see in the design it was hello world. However, once we actually launch, we are setting that to be hello tutorial viewers. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, hopefully it was informative. Just as a quick recap, went ahead, opened up our Android studio, went ahead, created a project, gave it a specific package name, which corresponded to our website. Uh, from there, we had a few import statements to update, well, specifically one where we just grabbed the activity. We actually removed these menu ones now. Changed this activity, extended it, um, and just went over the activity lifecycle. Just remember, you're always going to need your on create. Um, and then the key to remember is if you are going to be saving anything, do it in the on pause. We're going to come back to that concept later. Um, but there's no guarantee that you'll actually shut down your app gracefully. So on pause is where you want to do some, some, uh, some saving if you're going to need it. From there, we went ahead, took a look at uh, the method find view by ID, which comes from the activity class. Um, and we were able to grab the actual text view that we have. And then on that text view, set the text to it dynamically so that when we actually call on create, it gets updated and users see hello tutorial viewers. So that's it for this video tutorial. Hopefully it helped you. Hopefully with you for video tutorial too. Thanks very much for watching.